Okay, so today I want to talk about Pipewire. And I've talked about Pipewire many times. A lot of the time is on the podcast, so some of you might not have heard my opinions on it. Or you have just heard snippets here and there in videos where I've dropped sarcastic comments. And I have to say that I have a very strong opinion on Pipewire. My opinion is that it's just not ready yet, and I don't understand why it's being pushed on people. But I understand that some people out there have had really good experiences with Pipewire. They have found that it is a good replacement for things like Jack. Now, those people who have had that experience, I can understand that perhaps Pi Pipewire is a fantastic replacement for Jack, and it's easy to configure and easy to use. I don't personally think that's saying that much, because anyone who's actually looked at the Jack program and the Jack front end and all that stuff, you would understand that Jack is the most complicated piece of software to ever exist. So saying something is easier than Jack is not really saying all that much. But honestly, all that is beside the point, because what we want to talk about is Pipewire. And... For those of you who don't know, Pipewire is a complicated piece of software because it's not only a piece of software that sits on top of Pulse Audio in some situations, it can replace Pulse Audio in some situations, but it also deals a lot with video and screen capture for things like OBS and what have you. So when you say Pipewire is the future, what you're saying is kind of complicated because it's meant to do quite a bit of stuff. And my argument, through experience of actually using Pipewire, has been that it's just not ready for certain applications. Now, if all you ever do is log into your Ubuntu system, watch some YouTube, listen to some music, whatever, you're going to have a fine experience with Pipewire for the most part. That's not taxing its abilities at all. I have no experience with using Pipewire for music development or anything like that, so I have no thoughts on that process or any experience of how good or bad Pipewire happens to be. All of my experience with Pipewire comes from video creation. So I use things like Simple Screen Recorder and OBS and Audacity and Kaden Live and stuff like that. So content creation in that realm is where I have all my experience. And from that experience, I can tell you that Pipewire is not ready. So I've had several comments saying that I'm just an idiot and not using it right. That's obviously their opinion. And I find that to be analogous to Apple's complaint when the iPhone 4 was having problems of you're holding it wrong. I, like, I don't personally think that the, stu the problems that I've had with Pipewire are user errors. So let me explain the things that have gone wrong with Pipewire for me personally. Now let me go ahead and say this. A lot of the problems that I've had are less to do with Pipewire and more to do with app compatibility with Pipewire. So for example, I've noticed for whatever reason, at least on my system and in my experience, that Pipewire does not interact with things that are Flatpak all that well. So for example, if you download the Flatpak version of OBS, which is the officially supported version of OBS on Linux, it doesn't always work with Pipewire very well specifically with audio capture. One of the things that I've experienced with that multiple times is that for whatever reason, it will take my output devices, which is right now I have a DAC connected to my computer, which is, it's a DAC amp combo thing, some cheap that I just bought from Amazon. It, it does its job and a lot of people have reviewed it very well. It works fine under every other circumstance, but for whatever reason, a lot of times in that scenario where I'm using a flat pack with Pipewire of OBS, Linux has decided then to treat that output as an input. So when I see the bars in OBS, the audio level bars that I have set up, and I talk, it will show me talking in the output level, which is obviously not right. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to be. Now, you could just blame that on OBS. It'd be perfectly valid to do that. But, but I've also seen it in other places like Audacity. So I know that it's not just an OBS problem. Now, the thing about Audacity is, is that I also use that as a flat pack. So I don't know if it's a flat pack problem and just the way flat pack interacts with Pipewire or something else. I don't know. I can't answer that. I'm not a developer. What I do know is from my experience is that in those situations, Pipewire doesn't work. Now, outside of the whole flat pack thing, I've also had similar problems where for whatever reasons, devices connect and disconnect for random reasons. And it's not as if they're being physically disconnected. They're actually still connected to the computer. It just shows them connecting and disconnecting 
over and over again, just like seconds apart from each other, just on off, on off, on off. Don't know what's going on there either. And I can only assume that that's a pipe wire problem because, again, pipe wire is what I'm using. Now, the thing is, is that you kind of have to use pipe wire because trying to uninstall pipe wire from Arch is like trying to install Snap from Ubuntu. It's possible, but it's not that easy. Things like MPD rely on pipe wire for whatever reason. Even though MPD has been around for 25 years, maybe even longer, it should not rely on pipe wire, but it does. So removing it is almost impossible. Another experience with pipe wire that I've had a problem with is that it doesn't work very well with Caden Live. Some the things that I do in Caden Live require me to be able to see the waveform in the timeline. So if I want to cut out some silences or if I want to cut out some going throughs, for those of you who've been watching my videos, I've been trying to cut down on the words going through all the time. You know, if I want to cut that stuff out, I need to be able to see the exact places where the audio levels have gone up for those words, right? So I want to cut that stuff out. The problem I've been experiencing lately, and again, this may just be a KDE problem or a KDE a Kaden Live problem is that the timeline shifts. So you can, for instance, hear me talking, but the wave line, the waveform is completely flat. There's no like waveform there at all. And if you zoom out, the waveform will then like snap into place where it's supposed to be, and then all of a sudden the waveform is correct again. It's really weird. Again, could be a Kaden Live problem, but I haven't experienced that on systems that don't use pipe wire. Another thing that I've seen in Kid in Live is sometimes the audio levels aren't there at all, where it, it actually shows a waveform that is like oh, like maxed 100%. It sounds like it's completely static for the whole thing. It doesn't sound that way, but it looks like that. It's really hard to explain. I wish I had a, an example to show you. It's really weird. It happens all the time. And again, it's something that I've never seen happen on a system that doesn't have pipe wire installed. It doesn't happen all the time, but again, it's something I've seen. So when I say pipe wire is not ready, I say pipe wire is not ready for me. Okay, so I've said this multiple times. You may have a fantastic experience with pipe wire. It may be something that you've just had a wonderful experience with and you have just totally abandoned Pulse Audio and it's just, it's completely changed your life. It, that may be true for you. For me, it's not ready yet. It's broken in multiple situations. Now, again, I don't know whether it's not it's pipe wire or it's just these applications in their interaction with pipe wire that's causing the problem. It also could be a hardware thing where pipe wire just doesn't like my particular hardware. That's possible. But the problem is, is that I've seen other Linux YouTubers say some of the exact same things. So I know Brody Robertson had some issues with pipe wire way back. I don't know if those have been fixed. I think he said that pipe wire is now good for him. I'm not sure. I know eBuzz Central has made several videos on Pipewire. I've heard several other Linux YouTubers talk about how Pipewire does not work very well for video creation. This is not a Matt, you're an idiot type of scenario. This is something that has affected many people. And coming out and saying that, hey, you're an idiot, doesn't isn't really, you know, uh, 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 the right way to handle this, right? So for me personally, Pipewire is not ready yet. And the thing I don't understand is, is that the Linux community historically has been very slow to adopt things. So, for example, even Wayland has been in production for 15 years. Maybe not that long, probably since 2011, so we're probably looking at 9 years. Whatever the date is, whatever the amount of time is, it's been a long time since Wayland has been in production. If you watch some of Brian Lunduk's old Linux Sucks videos, he's been talking about Wayland and Mir for... A long time when he's talking about you know why Linux sucks and Xorg is old and all this stuff. So those software technologies have been around for a long time, and it's just now, so many years later, that Wayland has finally gotten to a point where people can use it. And even then, it's still not you know good for everybody. Like Wayland is not something that everybody can use. If you have a Nvidia graphics card, it's still in its early days, and even for People who don't have NVIDIA graphics card, if you're trying to c capture video on your screen or do anything complicated with Wayland, it tends to break. And a lot of that is because of pipe wire, but that's kind of beside the point. The point I was trying to make is that traditionally the Linux community is very slow to adopt new technologies. We're very much resistant to that type of change when we're using something that is standard, something that we always want to use and have been using for many, many years. 
when something new comes along, we're resistant to change to it. For whatever reason, that hasn't been the case with Pipewire. Every distro that I know, or at least the vast majority of them, have been very eager to switch to Pipeware. Now, some of that is because Pulse Audio has caused so many problems over the years. Distros like Ubuntu and Arch have both switched to Pipewire, and while they still use it over top of Pulse Audio in some cases, it's still there, and it's still causing problems for some people. Now, maybe it's not the vast majority of people. The vast majority of people may be very happy, but that's okay. Uh, those the, that vast majority of people are free to create YouTube channels and tout the benefits of Pipeware all they want. For me personally, it's not ready yet. So I don't quite understand the eagerness of distros to switch to it. But even then, I don't understand why it has become something that has to be so hard-coded into the distro. So if, for example, f four or five years ago, you wanted to just use ALSA in Arch Linux, you could do so and remove Pulse Audio fairly easily. Now, it would require you to remove several dependencies and stuff like that, but it was fairly easy to remove Pulse Audio and just use ALSA if that's what you wanted to do. These days, if you want to remove Pipewire, you're going to have to remove just an absolute ton of dependencies. And it's not like there's like six or seven dependencies and then, then that's it. But each of those dependencies then are dependencies for other things. So it's kind of like a, a never-ending spiral until you've removed like half of your system. Now that's probably exaggerating a little bit. But the point is, is that in order to remove Pipewire, it's pretty much impossible without removing every single piece of audio software on your computer. And that's not a good experience because if you don't want to use Pipewire, getting rid of it is damn near impossible. And the sad part of it is, is that there's not a ton of distributions out there that aren't switching to it. So I know like things like some versions of Debian you can still use that don't have Pipewire. I know you can you obviously use Gentoo without Pipewire if you want to, and I'm sure there are several others, but the point is that the mainstream ones have all switched. And that means that you either figure out workarounds for using Pipewire on whatever distro you've chosen, or you use one of those other distros, and that's not always the best choice to make. So for me personally, where possible, I've stopped using Flatpaks for certain applications. So even though the Flatpak of OBS is the official version of OBS on Linux, I have decided just to use the one that is in the Arch repository, which for those of you who use OBS know that it's way far behind. Like it's not even the latest release. It doesn't have all the features compiled into it. So you don't get things like the YouTube integration or the YouTube chat integration or the Twitch integration. None of that stuff is in the Arch version. And it is in the Flatpak version, which is why I switched to it. But it doesn't work very well all the time with Pipewire, so I've had to use the one in the Arch version. I still do use the Flatpak version of Audacity, and that's simply because I need a 3.0 version of that or, or higher, because I have several templates that have the new file format, and the version that comes from the Arch repos is still 2. something and uses the old file format. So I've still used that. Luckily, at least so far, knock on some wood here. The pipe wire that is on Arco right now seems to be working fine with Audacity. Sometimes the levels in Caden Live and stuff get all messed up like I was talking about, but I've been able to kind of work around that. But yeah, so I understand, again, that my experience is not everyone else's experience. That's kind of the point, is that for those of you who are out there championing pipe wire, slow down on it just a little bit and understand that not everyone's situation, not everyone's experience is the same as yours. And also, don't just say that because something goes wrong for someone, it automatically makes them an imbecile. It's not necessarily the case. Now, sometimes things can be user error, but it's not always the case. Sometimes the software is just not good. For them, at least. So that's it for this video. If you have comments, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to take my current patrons. Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jack Snipe, Jules, Steve, A, Cyber, Linux, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TGB, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Marnie, Andy, Ross, Eduardo, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Rowley, Peter, A, Crucible, Dark, Venus, X, Primus, and PM. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.